So now in this final video on DNA technology, we're going to be looking at some concrete, and we've alluded to this a uh, couple of times already, some concrete applications. So we'll entitle this next flowchart, Application of DNA Technology. And this is a big part of biology. This is something you probably have noticed I often emphasize. Why do I need to know this? Why is this important? Why is this relevant? Well, now we're going to sort of conclude our study of DNA technology by answering those questions specifically about this lecture. Number one, forensics. Forensics, very interesting. Any CSI fans will definitely understand that forensics plays a crucial role or has a crucial sort of reliance on DNA technology in the sense that let's imagine you have a small amount of DNA, too small to figure out if it's conclusive evidence or not. What you can do is you can use DNA technology to make many copies, you can amplify, make many copies of let's say a small amount of something that you found at the crime scene. So a small amount of let's say uh, uh, any sort of fluid that's found, okay? That fluid might contain DNA, might contain proteins. You can use DNA technology that to amplify a small, a relatively microscopic, maybe you can't even see it, amount of something, amplify it, and then do some analysis on that amplification. So forensics has a big, big role in DNA technology and vice versa. In addition, you can utilize DNA technology, believe it or not, for environmental cleanup. Okay, ENV for environmental cleanup. How can you use DNA technology for this? Well, what you can do is you can do the same idea of making copies. You can make many, many microbes, okay? You can manipulate and create microbes that break down toxins, okay? That are very good at breaking down things that are toxic to us, but they love to eat, okay? That break down um, toxins. These microbes can be manipulated and created through genetic engineering of sorts. And these microbes will go out and break down toxins that we really don't like. Now, of course, you might be wondering, well, why isn't everything clean about the environment? Well, these toxins and these microbes are not the absolute best at doing this. It's an expensive process, and it's a very sort of early stages on process that's still developing to this very day. But it's very cool to think that DNA technology can be involved in something important like environmental cleanup. Another important technology, and sometimes people consider this a very uh, controversial technology, is agriculture. Agriculture, you might finally be able to now figure out what it really means to be GMO, genetically modified organism. That should be clicking in your head right now because in agriculture, sometimes what people do, what um, agricultural uh, job is to do is to take genes and insert them. Okay, Genes are oftentimes inserted into certain plants and animals. Okay. In the agricultural world, you insert genes into plants and animals, and these inserted genes are done because this is going to make makes these you know animals or plants more productive. It makes these animal or plants maybe more resistant to disease. And this is the whole controversy surrounding GMO, genetically modified organisms, GMO foods. Is it okay for us to take genes and put them into, let's say, a crop so that that crop does not die constantly due to, let's say, a some sort of bacteria or some sort of uh, pest that causes and kills it? Now, basic research um, has stated, and this is just a, a research opinion, I'm not stating my own opinion on this, that this effect of genes being inserted into GMO foods, into creating GMO foods, does not change the overall outcomes, thus the health associated with the foods. But that's besides the point. Um, you can do your own research on that. It's good to finally be able to say that, oh, it's because of recombinant DNA, it's because of DNA technology that we hear this GMO nonsense. Now you're a lot more well-cultured on the topic, thus you can debate with your friends about it even more. That's just a side note. And finally, we can finish off our study of DNA technology by looking at something that's probably very important to you, I hope it is if you're taking biology, the medical aspect of DNA technology. DNA technology can be utilized in diagnosis and treatment. 
and it is utilized every single day in diagnosis and treatment. What you can do is you can take something like PCR, polymerase chain reaction. You can use PCR to, let's say, find certain primers, okay, to find primers for genetic disorders, okay, to find primers for genetic disorders. That's a good way to diagnose and treat um, certain things, okay, genetic disorders. You can use PCR for that uh, process, and you can also look at certain diseases caused by mutations. Uh, diseases caused by mutations. You can utilize DNA technology by looking at the mutations and comparing them to the norm. This is sort of the idea of amplifying and comparing normal versus abnormal types of genes. So that's another way to look at um, diagnosis and treatment. Um, there's another concept known as human gene therapy. Again, a quite controversial topic right now within the medical field. Human gene therapy is the idea of, uh, ideally, you would say, looking at a single, let's say, defective gene disorder, just one gene that's defective, okay, single defective gene disorder, for right now at least, we look at a single defective gene disorder in a human. What we can do is we can actually manipulate that gene and introduce um, what we consider the normal allele. Okay, we can actually introduce it because we know the normal, because we can sequence a normal DNA that's not defective and say, oh, okay, so that's what we have to create. Let's see if we can insert it into the defective region and see what happens. This is oftentimes used in bone marrow transplants. Okay, Bone marrow has a very big role in this and also um, a uh, deficiency known as SCID. Okay? This is an immunodeficiency that is uh, also utilized, utilizes human gene therapy. Um, and finally, we can talk about pharmaceutical products. I actually mentioned this uh, a couple of times already. That insulin example that we used um, is the basic idea behind pharmaceutical products utilizing DNA technology. Um, oftentimes what we can do is take proteins, right, like insulin. Proteins are often synthesized using uh, cell cultures, been synthesized with cell cultures. That basically means you insert recombinant DNA into E. coli, you let it uh, grow on agar, and it's going to make a bunch of insulin over and over and over again for you, and you just isolate it. Um, two examples of this, basic examples are human growth hormone. So if anybody you know is taking human growth hormone, HGH, that is utilized, utilizes DNA technology. And another example is, of course, the example that I went over, insulin is often done through this process of DNA technology. So overall, DNA technology is a big relevant, as relevant as it gets lecture for you guys taking general biology. Hopefully you can appreciate the complexity behind it. I really hope that one day uh, I really encourage you guys to go out, um, find a lab, do these actual DNA technology procedures because when you actually do them in a lab, um, in a lab setting, you really appreciate the fact that some crazy person was able to figure out that if I cut DNA with a restriction enzyme and mix it with a bacteria, that I can create a recombinant DNA and maybe I can put that in a bacteria and tell that bacteria to make me some insulin. That's crazy to me to think that we can manipulate the world around us to give us a positive outcome in terms of DNA technology. Biology is all-encompassing. Uh, you obviously know that I really care about it, but overall DNA technology, big relevant lecture. A lot of students always say, why do I take biology? It's so much memorization. DNA technology is why you take biology. This is an applicative lecture that I hope you've appreciated.